Okay, so unit 13, section views. Introduction, the details of the interior of an object may be shown more clearly if the object is drawn as through a part of it were cut away, exposing the inside surfaces. When someone, when showing an object in section, all surfaces were, that were hidden are drawn in visible surface lines. The surfaces that have been cut through are then indicated by a series of slant lines known as section lining. Um, the cutting plane line, the line that indicates the plane cutting through the object is a cutting plane line, figure 13.1. Uh, after being cut, the portion of the object to the right of the cutting plane, figure 13.1, is considered to be removed. The portion to the left of the cutting plane is viewed in the direction of the arrows as shown in figure 8a. A. So if it's cut like this, it's actually showing in that direction. So rectangular drawing, here's this direction. All right, full sections. The type of number of sections depends on the complexity of the part. A full section is one of which an imaginary cut has been made all the way through the object. The cut section of the object is then represented in a separate view called a section view. Hidden lines are represented surfaces behind the cutting plane are left out. These, this helps to keep the view clear and for better understanding. When additional section views of a part are shown, they are identified using different set of letters such as BB or CC. Half sections. A half section is often used for symmetrical objects. A half section shows a cutaway view of only half of a part. Figure 13.2 C. One advantage of half sections is that both an interior and exterior view are shown in the same view. So you can see here that the cut section or cutting plane is right here and there's the sectional view. Um, so offset cutting planes, uh, offsetting or changing the straight line direction of the cutting plane is used to describe the internal features of irregular objects. These features may not fall in a straight line, and therefore the cutting plane must be offset to pass through them. So it's shown here, just to show the cut view of these two holes, it's going to come here, come over, and down to show that. Offset cutting plane lines may also be used to show partial sections, like this. So you can see the partial section there. Revolve sections. Revolve sections are used to show cross-section shapes of spokes, ribs, cast irons, rods, structural steel shapes. The view is obtained by passing a, a cutting plane through an object perpendicular to the center line or axis of the part. The section is then rotated 90 degrees of the view to reflect the true size and shape of the area in the selection. Visible lines on either side of the section are removed or break lines are added to isolate the view. Figure 13.5, cutting plane lines are usually omitted in the revolve section lines. So, there's DD. And it's going to be revolved here, here, and here. So, remove sections. Remove sections are very similar to revolve sections. However, a remove section is taken out of a normal projection position in relation to standard views. A remove section is usually placed on a drawing in convenient place and labeled AA, BB, and so on. The letters identifying the section corresponding with the letters at the end of the cutting plane lines. So here's the remove section. So there's the, the cutting line. And then here's actually the remove section. Um, a remove section often is a partial section views. Frequently, the view is enlarged to permit greater clarification. Same, same here. So if it's cut on AA, then it's going to show it right here. It's going to just make it bigger. So broken out sections. When only partial section view is needed, a broken out section 
may be used. A broken out section isolates one area of the object for internal clarification. A heavy break line is used to define the boundaries of the view. Figure 13.9, broken out sections are used where less than half of the section is needed. So that would be the broken out section and it would have a more detailed view of it versus the whole thing. So, materials in section. In drawing sections of various machine parts, section lines indicate the different materials of which the parts are made. Figure 13.1, each material is represented by a different pattern of lines. On most drawings, however, sections are shown using a pattern of cast iron. The, the kind of material is then indicated in the specifications. So, most of the time you're just going to see like this, but some actual will actually break it down into different types of material. So, like if it was steel, it'd have two lines. If it was electric, like that. If it was earth, I mean, it breaks it down to whatever material you kind of want. So across the grain, with the grain, if it's wood. I've actually seen some uh, metal like that. But anyway, uh, copy the drawings of collars on the grid. Cut through sections AA and BB as indicated. And then sketch the, the section lining. So if you would come through here and you would actually like sketch it on everything. But of course, we're not going to do that. And we're also not going to do this one. So we're going to go ahead to go to unit 14. Introduction. And industrial drawing should provide all required information about the size and shape of the object. The print reader must be able to visualize the completed part describing on the drawing. In previous units, various views that are used to show shape of an object are explained. However, the, a complete size description is also needed to understand the machining requirements. The size of the object is shown by placing measurements called dimensions of the drawing. Each dimension has limits of accuracy which within it must fall. These limits are tolerances. In the following units, the types of dimensions and tolerances used in industrial drawings are discussed. Dimensions. The size requirements on a drawing may be given in any one or any combination of measurement systems. Dimensions may be fractional, decimal, or angular. Each system will be discussed in detail in later units. As explained in Unit 1, lines and symbols are special types of lines used in dimensioning. They are called extension lines, dimension lines, and leader lines. Uh, each has a specific purpose as it is applied to the drawing. In industrial practice, there are few rules followed in dimensional uh, or dimensioning a drawing. Understanding these rules is helpful in drawing interpretations and shop sketching. The most common rule are drawings should supply only those dimensions required to produce the intended objects. Dimensions should not duplicate on a drawing. If a dimension is provided in one view, it should not be given in other views. Duplicate or double dimensioning is redundant, permits error, and can lead to confusion in print interpretation. Dimensions should be placed between views where possible. Um, the, this helps in identifying points and surface dimensions and adjacent views. Dimensions should be spaced from the outside of the object in order of size. Smaller dimensions are placed closer to the parts they dimension. So showing here, if it's one inch, it's closer to it versus the three inch. Notes should be added to a dimension where drawing clarification is required. Dimensions should not be placed in a view, placed of the view if possible, and hidden surfaces should not be dimensioned if possible. Alright, types of dimensions. Dimensions placed on drawings are identified as either size or location dimensions. Size dimensions are used to indicate lengths, widths, thicknesses, diameters, such. Location di or dimensions are used to show location of holes, points, and surfaces. Figure 14.3, both types are often called construction dimensions. And it shows all that here. All right, methods of dimensioning. There are two common systems of dimensioning used in industrial drawings. The align method is read from the bottom of the right side of the drawing. 
3D dimensions done in, in this system often requires turning of the drawing. The align method is still used, but it is replaced with a second system called unidirectional. Uh, the unidirectional dimensions are all red from the bottom. Therefore, it is not necessary to turn the print. Uh, figure 14.4 shows the unidirectional line systems of dimensioning. So a line dimensioning on the left and unidirectional on the right. Most of the time you're going to see it on the right. Unidirectional is typically the, uh, what they use nowadays. Note, the most recent ASME standards recommend the use of unidirectional dimensioning. The drawings in this text, therefore, are shown in unidirectional dimensioning, like I said. Tolerances. Because it is nearly impossible to make anything to exact size, degrees of accuracy are specified. When a size is, of a, is given on a drawing, a tolerance is applied to it. The tolerance is a range of sizes within an actual dimension of the piece must fall. The tolerance specifies how the exact dimension must be. Just as in dimensioning, the tolerances may be fractional, decimal, or angular. Tolerances must be given in the title block area. 15, figure 14.5 or on the dimension itself. Tolerances may given in the title block apply to all dimensions unless others specified in the drawing. So most of the time it's going to have something like this where it's one place, decimal, two place, three place and so forth. But sometimes you'll actually see it on the actual dimension as shown here. Um, so upper and lower limits, all dimensions to which tolerances are applied have upper and lower limit of size. The upper limit of the print dimensional is the plus tolerance added to it. If no plus tolerance is allowed, the print dimension becomes the upper limit. The lower limit dimension is the print dimension with the negative to tolerance subtracted. If no negative tolerance is allowed, then the print dimension becomes the lower limit. So on this one, it shows bilateral, so it's going to be both ways. 1 and 3 eighths plus or minus 1 64th. So your, your upper limit's 1 25 64th and your lower limit's 1 24th. So on this one, it's going to uh, just be unilateral. So you got one plus 1 64th minus nothing. And then on this one, it's plus 0 and minus 1 64th. So it shows you the three different ways of actually writing it down. Methods of tolerancing. Uh, the two systems of tolerancing are shown as bilateral and unilateral tolerances. A bilateral tolerance allows a variation in two directions of the print dimension. Uh, a tolerance is given as both plus and a minus dimension. For example, 1 and 3 eighths plus or minus 1 and 64 figure 14 6 a bilateral tolerances may not always be equal in amount in each direction. A unilateral tolerance allows for variation in only one direction of the print dimension. The tolerance may be a plus or minus dimension from the print dimension, for example, 1 and 3 eighths plus 1 64 or 1 and 3 eighths minus 1 64. So the reason they do this, um, they're going to put the print or the the dimension that you want. Um, now, sometimes it or most of the time it'll have a, a bilateral tolerance. So even though they're wanting one inch or whatever, um, most of the time you're going to have plus or minus, you know, 10 thou, whatever. Um, but sometimes they're wanting that one inch. They're wanting it as close to one inch as you can, but you can't be over one inch. So they have a negative tolerance, but they want it as close to one inch as possible, if that makes sense. All right, fractional dimensions. Perhaps the oldest dimensioning system is the fractional dimension. This system divides an inch unit into fraction parts within an inch. 1 64th being the smallest fraction used. Decimal dimensions are, have largely replaced the fractional dimension due to modern requirements for accuracy. Close tolerances and the use of precision measuring and inspection tools. However, fractioning is still held, are found in older part prints, assemblies, fabrication components, piping, tooling fixtures, standard material sizes, and cutting tools such as drills and reamers. Um, it is important to for the print reader to have basic understanding of the system of, of measurement. Assignment D9, idle or shaft, is provided in this unit to provide pra practice working fractions. 
Fraction dimension is used where close tolerances are not required. This is often the case in casting, forging, standard material sizes, bolts, drilled holes, and other.